What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here on the Bangkok Bagger, the magical green gold wing of love, the mail order glide, baby. This bike is still struggling, but it's still plugging away. You can't kill a Honda. Well, actually, I imagine you could kill a Honda. I think you just have to try really hard. Got a lot of cool, fun stuff coming up. I still haven't gone over and inspected Project Raw Dog, my dirtster, uh, because, yeah, I just haven't had time yet. I, got, I mean, I'm getting back from the rescue mission, the Sportster rescue mission, after doing the BADR barbecue LOL trail, whatever it was. I mean, it performed well. I know I'm gonna have to replace the rear shocks. The burly slammers just weren't cutting it. I think that's really what caused me to break a spoke, just bottoming out about 300 times in a row on, on a day full of trails. Just isn't great for metal spokes when you are already a pretty big guy and the bike is already big too. Anyway, I know I gotta go over the whole bike and, and inspect everything after its maiden voyage on the, the MADBR. So the whole point of the BDR of doing that was not only to have an amazing time with all my friends and meet a lot of new friends, and <laughs> we all built off-road sportsters, adventure sportsters to do it. That was awesome. But the whole point of that was to be a shakedown run and see how the bike would react and how it was to handle it off-road. Because the whole reason that I built the bike or started building the bike in the first place was to do the Trans America trail but you know usually I just throw caution to the wind but I didn't quite want to just send it on a trans American trail right out of the gate and I'm glad I didn't I'm glad I, I went on the MADBR barbecue LOL WTF because I, I learned a lot about the bike and I learned what I'm gonna have to fix what works what doesn't work and here we are at Bay Brothers picking up Shay Lisi she's dropping off the old Kia to get worked on <laughs> my thoughts exactly it's too bright <laughs> it is bright and hot. I am just incredibly slippery right now. <laughs> just close your eyes. Life's easier that way anyway. <laughs> sunscreen, definitely sunscreen. Yeah, what do you need to travel in Florida? Something for the sun, something for the sweat, and preferably some sort of firearm for protection as well. It's dangerous to go alone. Huh? Shoot the sun? Who says I can't shoot the sun? Entree. Oh, spicy seed. It's so spicy. <laughs> Black hot leather and the Florida sun uh, don't play well together. So here's something else I realized doing the MADBR with all the boys who also build adventure sportsters is, man, uh, Shay Lisi. I really, I want, really want Shay Lisi to do the Trans American Trail with me. Like I don't want to do it alone. It's you, we we always do motorcycle stuff together, and that brings into question: is what does somebody who's four foot eleven ride as an adventure bike? Uh, completely across the country off-road in the Trans-American Trail. You know, that's the real big problem with adventure bikes. I know everyone immediately says, well, Jocelyn Snow rides a BMW GS. I'm just like, first of all, Jocelyn Snow's not four foot 11. She's like five two. And I'm sorry, man, it's an important three inches. You guys truly don't understand what a short inseam that Shay has. So trust me, it's three inches makes a really big difference. And yeah, get your jokes in here. <laughs> me and old blissful Ellie and three inches of difference. What the hell? I just went the wrong way. How did I just get lost in my own town? Did I really just do that? I did. Huh. I literally went the wrong way. I was trying to go to the interstate, yeah. Me and Shay Lisi on the Trans-American Trail, traversing the entire country off-road with no road signs. We're definitely gonna do it. As I was saying, <laughs> just ask Blissful Ellie. Three inches is a pretty big difference. And when it comes to your inseam, it just is, uh, and yeah, I guess you could say like, we could just try to build her an adventure sportster too, but man, that's just like, <laughs> it's a 600 pound motorcycle, man. And I just don't think that Shay Lisi is gonna be up to handling that thing on the Trans-American Trail. I think she needs something a little more of an adventure bike, but like, what do you do? How do you fit on these bikes? I don't even know how she's gonna fit on them. So we're actually gonna go out today so that's, that's what we're doing. Like I said, I am I am just dead set that Shay Lisi is going to join me in attempting the Trans-American Trail. Like one way or another, we're gonna figure this out. Shay Lisi's doing it with me. Uh, as I was saying, I really don't know what to expect because adventure bikes is not normally something Shay Lisi tries to sit on. She tried to sit on the Pan America once. We already know she can't ride that. That is like super, super out of the question. So that's what we're doing today. We are out bike shopping. <laughs> we're gonna 
just hit a couple different dealerships and see what happens, man, and just see how Shaylisi ends up fitting on these adventure bikes, see what maybe if she gets an idea of what she likes and what's within our price range, which is very, very, very low. <laughs> I mean, very low. We, we cannot spend a lot of money on this because we're, uh, a lot of different stuff is happening right now, including us getting evicted from the shop. So perhaps our garage, we're having to move it. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do yet. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Like I said, Shaylisi's joining me on the Trans-American Trail. That is going to happen one way or another. I just don't know what kind of motorcycle she's going to do it on. All right, now that I'm actually going the right way, <laughs> we're going to swing by Honda first and see what's going on there. I think it's like a multi-bike dealership, so maybe they got Kawasaki there or something too, so she can try out a Versys or anything like that. We definitely won't be going to the BMW dealership, but <laughs> I'll keep my mouth shut about that one. Things I learned on the MADBR, I think that the most important thing <laughs> that Shaylisi's going to need in an adventure bike is something that's light. light easy to handle most of the sections that we're going on i don't think that will really get above like 55 or 60 miles an hour and it's not even like oh it has to be light just to traverse all these this terrain and because the terrain is not that technical but there's some parts of the trans-american trail that i've seen especially in colorado that are pretty technical like tennessee has some too but for the vast majority of it, it's not super technical basically in my mind what you want to focus in is a maximum amount of fun and Shaylisi is just going to have way more fun on a light bike. The lighter it is, the more confident she's going to be on the bike, the more she's going to get to enjoy the scenery, going to get to enjoy what she's doing, and not be constantly worried about dropping some heavy-ass bike on her leg. So that's really what I'm looking for is lightness and then an ease of packing luggage because I had just a, a hell of a time packing all my, my dry bags on my Sportster and I will figure it out. I'm gonna have to figure out something different, but I know that it was a constant worry in the back of my head because I was constantly having to readjust them or worry about them breaking. So a modular ability to pack luggage also very high on the list. I think those, and good gas mileage, those three things, I think that's what, what Shay Lisi is looking for. A light bike that is easy to pack luggage on that gets good gas mileage. Does such a thing and also has a, you know, a 29 inch or under seat height. Does this unicorn exist? Yeah, I think this place up here is like Honda, Kawasaki. Honda would be the Africa twin. The Do they even still make the NC 700? I'm not sure. Pretty much just the Africa Twin. Honda does not make a whole lot of, their motorcycle selection is not huge these days. The Honda Africa Twin, and then the Kawasaki Versys might be an option. Oh, it's Suzuki too, and they make, uh, what does Suzuki make? The V-Strom 650. Hey, I don't know if they got one of those here, or if they even still make it. Okay, up here at Honda Power Sports, there's a couple different bikes. There's a KLR 650, which I really don't think is gonna work, but, uh, old tried and true over here. I didn't know they did CF Moto here, so Chinese company, but the seat height definitely looks low. I don't know how heavy it is. I didn't know that uh, Kawasaki was making a KLX 230. Looks like they're just bringing everything back these days. The KLX 230 or the, K the 230 like this was always kind of like a trail bike. I'm just amazed that they managed to get this thing uh, street legal. Like whatever emissions they had to put it through or whatever they had to do the engine. I'm really, really shocked that this is a street legal motorcycle because this was always kind of a play bike. That engine right there was for like, almost like a big pit bike or something, but that's got a tag on it. And of course, the tried and true DR650, the CRF 450L. These are all plated adventure bikes too. Is there any one that you actually, that like catches your eye that you think looks cool? That one, that is a cool bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Z900 is a cool bike. Yeah, we got all the usual suspects here. I don't know what's up with the CF Moto, these Chinese bikes, but it certainly like looks all right. It's with these Chinese bikes, it's just sometimes they try to make them look so slick up here that it ends up just looking cheap because it's like when something is cheap and trying to look nice, it's always really just really stands out to me. But who knows, man, the Chinese companies have come a long way and I've heard a lot of good things about them, uh, about some of the new stuff coming out. So maybe, but unfortunately Shay sat on it and that's a big old no on that one. In fact, uh, in fact, that's a no on everything. She sat on the KLR, neither one of her feet had touched the ground. Same with the Suzuki DR650. Um, this like kind of, but I don't know about a KLX 230 on the Trans-American Trail. I'm sure it could be done, but I don't think that's what we're looking for. This one, sure. 
<laughs> you could uh, think about how much beer. Riding. Yeah, how much beer you can carry for me. That's so much beer. That was a strikeout. Definitely not a KLR 650. The CF Moto even was too tall. ER 650, definitely not. Like the KLX 230, possibly. But even that was like almost a 33 inch seat height. It really wasn't working. So I think we're gonna check out more Moto next and try out some KTMs. I'm not even sure what KTMs make in these days, but I think they make a couple of small CC ADV bikes. Only one way to find out. <laughs> Well, some minor technical difficulties, including Shailisi's PC800 not having a clutch when we got out here, me taking the clutch cover off, and there being a, <laughs> a troubling amount of water inside of it. Now, any amount of water is troubling, but this is definitely what I would describe as a troubling amount of water. We just topped it off with a dot four, and she's got a clutch again. So, <laughs> as we always say, every bike's an adventure bike if you have an adventure on it. And this one's definitely an adventure bike because you don't know if you're going to make it. <laughs> Roll a D20 for luck. Also other difficulties, as you notice, we are not at Morimoto sitting on KTMs right now because uh, they're closed on Mondays. It's true though, the PC800 is definitely adventure bike in so much as we've taken the PC800 and this bike on some pretty awesome adventures. I mean, why this bike wasn't on it, but going down the Blue Ridge Parkway with Shay Lisi on the PC800 at uh, the, the Honda STD at the time, that was a good freaking time. But PC800 covered in plastic like that, definitely not what I would call an off-road weapon. And we don't even need an off-road weapon, but you start dropping something that looks like a PC800 in the rocks it ain't gonna last long okay it wasn't designed for that hard kind of life pc 800 was definitely i mean it wasn't even really made for highway cruising it's supposed to be an in, in town city bike but we definitely let that sucker loose on the highway i don't mind using something for something that's not its intended purpose you just gotta have a little bit of a imagination but I don't think that the PC800 is getting repurposed as an off-road adventure bike anytime soon. So we still are going to go to Morimoto, check out the KTMs there. I think they've got a couple other brands there too and a pretty big used selection. So maybe we'll have a little bit, bit better luck finding Shay Lisi an off-road adventure bike for the Trans-American Trail up there than we did at the Honda. But I'm not really sure. In the meantime, since Morimoto's closed on Mondays, let's go visit Ken Dean at his new shop at Tiger Temple Tattoo in get tattooed. I mean, we're out trying to buy a motorcycle today, so if we can't do that, we might as well make some permanent life-altering decision in some other way. I mean, the void has to be filled. The void. Yes, the void must be filled. The void has no eyes. It has no mouth. Yet the void cries out. The void screams. The void hungers. It hungers for more. Always more. So hungry. Never full. No matter how much we try to fill the void with meaningless sex, adrenaline, adventure, danger, purchases, things, food, experiences. Still, still the void is gaping. Still, the void cries out for more. A gaping wound that has no beginning and has no end. A gaping wound that never stops bleeding and never stops wanting more. But it's awful fun trying to fill the void. So let's keep on doing that. Yeah, hey, Ken. <laughs> Ken said he wasn't looking for an apprentice, but he now has an apprentice, which is really fun because once uh, Ken's apprentice is ready to start doing his first tattoos, uh, me, Ken, and Shay Lee's here are all going to come up here and get the dumbest tattoos you can possibly imagine, all matching. But what was your name again? Kyle. Kyle? Are you on Instagram? What's that? Are you on Instagram? Yeah. Fish one Push blood KO. Push blood KO? Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Tattoo on fruit or something? Like oranges or something? Fruit. And then there's this company that just came out called A Pound of Flesh. And you could buy body parts, like Ooh. feet, hands, and arms. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's so much like tattoos. Can you microwave them so they're warm? <laughs> <laughs> I do not know, but I'm look into it. Yeah, find out. No reason. <laughs> so Ken just told an interesting story about what it's like to tattoo in your hometown because he tattooed in Hollywood, California, putting freaking bar barbed wire and roses and, and everything on people coming in and out. But he goes, when you tattoo in your hometown, you're constantly surrounded by the worst tattoos you've ever done in your life as an artist. <laughs>
So welcome to that, Kyle. I can't wait to get a terrible tattoo from you and show it to everybody. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be great, dude. Be like, oh, check out this this uh, picture of Elmo sucking his own dick. <laughs> this guy Kyle did it. Uh, Kush KO. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Elmo put Kush Black KO. Yeah, sign it. Elmo fucking giving himself a No, I know. I feel the same way about not being drunk, Shay. Don't worry. <laughs> We're out here hanging with Ken Dean, talking about his titty buzzard over here, which has always been one of my favorite pieces of art that he's done, which is hard to pick from because you have a lot of pieces of art. There's a the axolotl that you painted for me is in the place of honor. Yeah, yeah, my favorite. It's like, I always call it my inner child because it's so, all it wants to do is play paper airplanes, but it's also disgusting and gross and crusty. <laughs> I've all been bugging Ken to make this into a t-shirt for forever and a day. If that looks like something you would buy, the Ken Dean Titty Buzzard, uh, let me know down below because I think I might have finally talked him into it. It's like, it could be an apple, it could be like, you know, whatever, and and then it would show me to, like, like that, that's a salt and battery. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but anyway, so I would just put a little eye over there and put a little eye over there and a little mouth just to make it totally fucking cool. And now it's just cute. Yeah, you just took them cute. and you just made them cute. Yep, a salt and battery, see? But adorable. A little apple. You just spread it out. Look at that. Yeah. Hot butt. <laughs> you should do that um, with caricatures of human genitalia. I would like that. the stinkers. <laughs> they usually be covered with different stuff. So one, one's got white stuff on it, one's got brown stuff on it. Okay. <laughs> anything more heavy metal than being bikers and riding your hogs to go get tattooed when your motorcycles are uh the milk toast pacific coast and the mail order glide maybe that isn't super heavy metal but we still did it oh good times hanging out with ken dean but it always is ken dean is just absolutely one of my most favorite people on the goddamn planet uh, the void is temporarily satiated by some new tattoos Although we've still got adventure bikes to try out. Void demands more danger, demands edge of your seat, life and death, Trans-American Trail, sheer drop-offs and boulders on each side of you. That's what it wants. So I guess we'll pick this one back up tomorrow and head out to Morimoto and see if Shaylee C fits on any KTMs or whatever else they might have out there. I got faith, we'll find something. And if we don't find something that works right out of the box, we'll find something that we can make work. Cause like I said, we got the stoner mentality when it comes to this stuff. Anything's a bong as long as you try hard enough. Right, day two, the search continues. The search for spot for the perfect adventure bike for a four foot 11, 95 pound Shalisi. It's not looking good. And I was wrong about Jocelyn Snow. Jocelyn Snow is actually 5'2", but still, still three inches taller than Shalisi. And if you're six foot tall and you think you're the same height as someone who's six foot three, you've clearly never stood next to somebody who's six three. Today is definitely one of those, my brain ain't firing on all eight cylinders kind of days. And I never really had a V8 up there to begin with so <laughs> shade tree's struggling today and uh, compounded with it feels like riding through a blow dryer that's on full blast in a bathroom that you just got done taking a scalding hot shower in it's a rough day in tampa today it's uh one of those days that you gotta pay for you gotta pay when you live here all the time because uh a few days during the summer like this keeps the yankees home in the hot months if it was nice year round in florida like it is during the winter you wouldn't be able to turn around here without bumping into an asshole. All right, let's see if Morimoto's got Shea Lisi hooked up. Well, I haven't taken a look at the new KTMs anyway, and I have my KTM 300 XCW. I'm a, I am team orange all day long, man. I love a KTM. And even though I love them, I have no idea what they got going on right now. So let's check them out. I keep waiting for Indian to make this into an adventure bike. It just seems like the platform is ready for it. That one's got knobbies on it and stuff, but I don't know, man. When you're owned by Polaris, it just seems like all the stuff is already there. Polaris already does so much off-road stuff. Just apply that to this to this engine platform. I would love to see that. There's a guy who comes up to the Dirty Shame who has one of these Kimco spades. I think it's the Kimco spade. He gets it up to like, he literally gets up to like 70 miles an hour. He's done a couple things to it. It's his everyday driver. So, you know, people are like, oh, Kimco is not a Honda, not as good as a Grom. He rides his every single day. 
Huh? Not in the dirt. He just like he rides it to work. I said, could it? Oh, could it go in the dirt? Yeah, anything can go in the dirt. <laughs> I know a lot of Grom guys are switching to these Duke 390s. I don't know if they make a KTM 390 ADV bike. The Duke 390s are supposed to be really cool. Can you even stand it up? Yeah. Yeah, that's small. Then his little brother, the Duke 200. KTM writes their numbers kind of weird, so I can't tell if that's a, does that say 890? Okay, no, 890, that's, that's not 390. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I haven't seen the new line of KTM adventure bikes yet. They look freaking cool. Well, I really don't think any of these are Shaley C styles. That's the Duke 200. Well, I'll be honest, I did not expect to find much at More Moto, but we did find two really cool things. One, Shaley C loves the Kimco. The Kimco, I think it's the Kimco Spade. Kimco Spade, like I said, I got a buddy who has one and he absolutely loves it. Not really a bike I ever spent a lot of time thinking about till Shaley C sat on one and man, it looks just like a perfectly sized cafe racer for her. I guess not cafe racer, maybe brat style bike, whatever you want to call it. Nice, cool little vintage look to it. Really kind of dug it. And two, she absolutely loved the KTM Duke 200 and Duke 390. Again, I wasn't expecting to find much at Morimoto and we really didn't find much in the way of an adventure bike, that's for sure. But since KTM, I mean, everything they make is either adventure bikes, naked standards or dirt bikes. Everything is so tall except for their mini bikes. I, I, I honestly didn't know much about the Duke 200, Duke 390, man. What cool options those are, especially for a full frame bike that's, you know, not a Grom, you know, it's not a not a Honda Monkey. It's like a full frame motorcycle that's a 200 or a 400 cc bike that really like Shay Lisi at four foot 11 wouldn't really have that much of a problem riding around. Very surprising because I see a lot of short girls and short guys, especially like the under five, three and five, two range that just go like, well, I'll just ride around a Grom or something like that. And damn dude, a Duke 200 or a Duke 400 that would be a hell of an upgrade to a Honda Grom, and you'd still be able to get both toes on the ground. Come on, man. We're just trying to have a nice, uh, well, I guess it is Tuesday in the middle of the day. Everyone else is working on the road. But we're just trying to have a nice ride here. Come on, baby. Oh, you know. I was saying it felt a little hot earlier, and, and I usually don't mind the heat so much, but after I just said it was fine because it keeps the Yankees away, I was kind of saying, man, I, I just said that, but I kind of don't mean it. It's kind of just bad. We got back home, and Shaylisi was really feeling ill, really just not feeling well, and uh, you see I'm delivering the packages. I'm venturing back out into the heat, and I went online, and the news says that uh, with the 80% humidity and 95 degrees out that it is right now, the relative air temperature, what it feels like is 131 degrees. <sighs> 131, baby. Shaylisi gets heat stroke, um, and she was really feeling sick after we got just being on the bike, so if we got back after like 15 minutes. But the show must go on. I am venturing back out into the heat because I don't care how hot it is, these packages are getting delivered by motorcycle and not in the car. Oh, Lord. I mean, did I have to... Do... <laughs> I'm just loading them up. I'm like, do I have to do this in my helmet, too? If I ever wanted a film crew, it's only so I just didn't have to wear a helmet sometimes for the GoPro. <sighs> okay, I'm not even going to try to pretend to be a tough guy right now. It is brutal. Some days like this that literally every single stoplight feels like a personal insult. Just like an insult directed exactly at me. <laughs> a stoplight was put there just... <laughs> Just to fuck with Shade Tree Surgeon. These personal attacks are egregious and they will not stand. The city of Tampa's out to get me, but I guess I don't blame them. Heading up to the Gold Wing on the post office in a relative temperature of 131 degrees to drop off all the t-shirts and all the stickers you guys have ordered from Brapstar.com, all the Shade Tree Army merch you guys have ordered, all the Brapstar merch you guys have ordered, all the stickers from Maria Mew and from Godzelly, one blissful Ellie, six foot five, long, tall, and deadly blissful Ellie, and Mysterious mysterious Maria Mew and her marvelous monster trucks, Greyfoot and Big Big Digger? <laughs> I'm sorry, Greyfoot and Big Bigfoot and Grave Digger. All right, give me a break. It's 131 degrees out. Oh, another personal attack against my character, the stoplight is, come on. Please, sir, please. I am just gonna skip 
tooting melodiously and only tootle with vigor today because it is too hot for this crap. Uh, but it's not too hot to deliver the packages. As I always say to you guys, almost everybody who orders a sticker or a t-shirt, they do it because they ride, because they want to ride, or because they love somebody who rides motorcycles. Motorcycles flavor almost every single thing that I do, Shaylisi does, and all of our friends do. So it only makes sense to me when I take these packages that you've spent your hard-earned money on, that we pack them ourselves, and then they get taken to the post office in a motorcycle, on the back of a motorcycle, or on something, some kind of two-wheeled motorized vehicle. I don't know, damn it. It might not mean that much to some people who order the packages, but it means a lot to me. I don't care how hot it is, rain or shine. I mean, isn't that the post office's motto anyway? Rain, sleet, snow, sun. I mean, the sun's pretty brutal. Anyway, I don't care what's happening. It could be the damn apocalypse. Freaking moths and jaguars bursting out of the ground with big old titties and women's faces and fire raining from the sky. The devil coming down and smoking a joint. I don't care what's going on. A motorcycle is bringing your package to the post office. <laughs> it's just my kingdom for a scrap of shade. Hmm. I wonder where he's sending himself. That smart guy over here goes and gets a cart, parks right next to the door. And I forget I've got to take it down the ramp. Oh, the Ybor City Post Office. Never a dull moment in there. They're not the biggest fans of me, that's for sure, because I still haven't figured out how to print a manifest for all my packages. I know there's some way to do it, I just don't know how. Bad with computers, okay? I'm not exactly the most organized person in the world. It's amazing with Shaylisi's help, because she's the only way I'm able to do this, Shaylisi and Maria Mew, that I'm even able to get these packages organized enough to send out to you guys. <laughs> One day I'll learn how to print a manifest and maybe they won't hate me anymore. And until then, they're gonna have to scan them in individually, all right? We're, we're paying customers here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love the adversity, if I'm being completely honest though. The more adversity that exists in my life, the more I laugh and the more fun I have. What can I say? I just kind of like the challenge. Now, when it comes to my life going smoothly, and when it isn't, and all of a sudden I'm like, why are things so hard? After I've spent all day making them harder on myself for fun. Yeah, that's kind of silly, but uh, such is the duality of an asshole. In the hands of the USPS now, boys. Oh my gosh, you are the man. I appreciate that so much, brother. Thanks, man. You just saved somebody's order. <laughs> You're the man. Let's we'll see whose it was. Exactly, they're all important. That was so cool. What a good dude. Let's see, who'd, who'd he save? Curtis Earhart. A good Samaritan. Just grabbed your package off the ground and brought it to the post office. What a dude. 130 degrees. I love riding bikes, but I think I'm going to enjoy riding my motorcycle right back home to sit in the AC. Even though we struck out on Shay Lisi finding an adventure bike, I think I'm going to go home, wait out this heat in the AC. Once the sun starts to set, it gets a lot nicer out. And got to go over the Dirtster. Project Raw Dog definitely, definitely needs a once over. And I need to start making a list of everything I've not only got to upgrade, but things I've got to fix and replace. So well, let's get on. Well, uh, I did want to come here and work on my green sportster and kind of go over everything that was wrong with it and everything that I needed to do. But uh, in the course of all my adventures, I forgot that Shay Lisi's uh, Willem Dafoe's The Green Goblin was still occupying the lift with a carburetor that needs to be rebuilt. Or we've got that Makuni on there. I just got to make it work. Last time I was working on it, I just got really frustrated because I couldn't make something fit and it was 95 degrees out. And it was also just the sun was glaring right on it and I was tired and I was sweaty and you guys know how it goes. Anyway, I don't want to take a broken bike off the lift, especially when we're so close to finishing it. So before I work on my Sportster, I'm going to start working on her Sportster. I was just working in the shop, literally going like, man, we're not able to find Shaylisi an adventure bike. I don't know what we're gonna do. I was like racking my brain for what we might get. And all of a sudden she pulls up beeping the horn on that thing and 
<laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go over to her channel because uh, her video is probably coming out right after this one and see what she got. But that is uh, not what I expected to say the least. I don't know about this one, but uh, Shay Lisi seems pretty confident. And when I'm the idiot trying to do the Trans American Trail on a 20 year old 883 Sportster, I can't really say a whole lot about Shay Lisi wanting to do it on something ridiculous too. And it just so happens to be the very motorcycle that one of our very favorite YouTubers rides as well. Well, an updated version of one anyway. But that's going to about do it for this one. Make sure you go head over to Shay Lisi's channel and check out her new ride. Until next time, y'all, keep it weird.